I'm Jill T. I'm Deb Schilling. What inspired us was the love of the music and a realisation that there's a gap in the market that we, we felt that we could fill um, and do well with it. The reason we're doing it this year is because it went well last year. <laughs> <laughs> so we're very happy about that. We've made it bigger, better, uh, and hopefully our customers will realise how much care that Debs and I have put into it. There was some great feedback following last year really great feedback and that came in great sales for super early bird tickets we kind of knew that we'd hit a spot that people really loved so there was no question that it, there was going to be a second year was there the ticket agency said if we sold 200 tickets early bird for a new festival that would be like great really great if we sold 300 it'd be phenomenal we sold 983 in three weeks on a new festival so uh yeah as deb said we kind of thought we'd got something right <laughs> with things like attention to details and things like that you know my sort of background in corporate has been quite important in developing all that side of things and so many people are saying that aren't they that when they're out there that you know there is there's so so much attention to detail which is great to hear but there's an enormous amount of work that goes into it we're we, we, we exceptionally lucky exceptionally lucky because the team that we've got around us is second to none but we've got volunteers of friends of family and family everyone comes and works together and i can't express enough how amazing that feeling is to have everyone together we have campfires of the night when we're on the build through rain or how or whatever was going on last week we managed mm. to to still have a, such an amazing spirit and, and those guys just honestly work so hard for us we've got a great team of carpenters who their first job was to build a bar for us <laughs> wasn't it yeah <laughs> which they did which has been quite well used yeah <laughs> No, it's, it's in our private, like, in our camp. We, we made a pub called the Who'd Have Thought It. And um, <laughs> it's like a really good little place that everybody gathers. So crew, we've, been, we've had a few parties, haven't we? Mm. Yeah. Every night. <laughs> That's totally what it's all about, is that sense of community and love. Someone described us walking to a big hug, what it was last year. So we're hoping that it's an even bigger hug this year. <laughs> um, and, and we've got a group of people that... Uh, uh, on our socials called the Black Deer Attendees and we're up to 560 members who just talk Black Deer <laughs> for the whole year. And we really value the fact that these people are actually really loyal to us and all this week they've been so excited about coming to the festival and it's like it's really heartwarming actually. When we first started the whole journey as they say <laughs> um, we knew that there was a market for country um, and and Americana but w what we wanted to do was kind of really identify a niche within both so um, the route that we wanted to go because it's what we love is the real authentic side of country so less so the poppy side so the C2Cs and the long road for example tend to focus a lot more on that side of, of country um, and you know Americana is country folk blues bluegrass so that's it kind of kind of more of an Americana festival really and, the, and the, with the authentic country within it and this year we've introduced um, some real heavy blues as well which is what uh, the Roadhouse is all about Desert Scene who um, run Desert Fest they promote Desert Fest in London they've curated that stage at the Roadhouse and that's more kind of heavy heavy blues psych sort of a bit more rocky really um, and then we've got a whole amazing mix of of great music going on throughout the site haven't we yeah the great the great thing for us is that we've got a booker bev burton who's who worked with me for years on the hop farm so she was the booker with with a promoter and when we decided to do the festival she was the first port of call to get involved but deb's and i we're also so involved with every single artist that's picked. So it's it's a group decision, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If they're right, is it right for we our brand? To every artist, you know, extensively. Um, yeah. We decide as a group who we, you know who we're going to go for. So yeah, the lineup's really important to us. Everything on the site is about. I know it's an overused word, but it is about authenticity. So 
you know, great craft. Um, it's, it, the whole look is, is very sort of rustic and it's, you know, we're embracing the outdoors. We've got a beautiful site here. So it's kind of back to nature, big campfires. We've got, I think, three campfires in the arena. Two. Two. <laughs> It was going to be three, but the cowboys didn't want one. The cowboys decided against it because their lassoes might get burned. <laughs> Seriously. Um, yeah, so, you know, that sort of smell of wood-burning smoke and great food. The Americana vibe is, is about that sort of smokehouse cooking. And so we've got some great chefs here um, doing demos and competitions. Because we've obviously developed the festival for year two we've added more content we've improved the content that we had um and we've just there's some lovely little gems that we've that we've got in the arena we've got a gallery telling stories of some of the early artists and we've got a series of great country films that we're showing each night in our live fire area um, so, and we've also got a gospel brunch on Sunday, so we've got a gospel choir with some amazing artists, just artists that are here for the weekend who've said, yeah, we want to join in. So this be fun. It's going to be amazing, and it's all traditional sort of hymns that are going to be sung. We're going to give away um, southern fried chicken with waffles and maple syrup, which is what a gospel brunch is, and that's free to our congregation. Ooh, oh, my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we've built a custom bike workshop, we've got hot rod cars, we've got so much in the roadhouse area. Already there's people talking around the motorbikes and really, like you know, they're real good custom bikes. We've got a 1945 Harley Davidson there, you know, the, the, there's some interesting stuff, just lots and lots of talking points all around. It's not just music in a, in a tent. And, you know, happy days, it's like, you know, really carefully thought what we what we believe our audience deserve actually one of the other things i wanted to talk about also was uh what we've done with the yard you know the thing that's really important is also bringing in the local area and making it their festival that they're proud of and that they enjoy because i've worked on the estate for a long time i've got to know a lot of the local uh, live music that was so important for us to to integrate them into the festival so we've done it in a way that is step one into the festival is, is to perform at the yard and the yard is the campsite stage. Uh, so that is all being managed by the local music um, venue. And, and, you know, there's a guy called Paul Dunton who, who's also really big in the music in Tunbridge Wells. And there's Nigel and Pete and the four of them are, are, are kind of... Uh, yeah, Jason from the forum. And it's, it's just bringing them all in again what's a joy is they have done so much locally to promote black deer and they're proudly um hosting the stage over there we're going to pick artists from that stage to perform at black deer 2020 on the bigger stages so there's a lovely incentive for local mm. talent to you know yeah. have an opportunity to develop beyond you know the local pubs and and venue to aim for, isn't it? yeah just so much going on but that but that's kind of what what the whole feel is really it's about being real um it's about community you'll see our artists wandering around yeah well yeah L last year being, last know. year they all, well, they all come out of the first like normally they do their stuff and go yeah. we've got so many artists who want to stay this they, they, they want to stay for the weekend artists that performed last year and not performing are coming for the weekend to our it's festival like that, yeah. lots of them so it's it's that that's what I think people look people got it they came to a beautiful environment they felt at peace because because you can't help it it's a very spiritual place this this is because for five years I've worked with it so I'm I really I understand how this landscape rolls and um one of the, the compliments we had is last year was they felt like the festival had been here for years because it had in my head <laughs> so the way it flowed the way you know everything about what we did last year was because I kind of, I'd, I'd lived a festival, but never expected to have our own. So for us to have our own is like, it's been great, isn't it? Hard work, but great. It's a real difficult site to work because it hasn't got nothing laid on at all. We bring in the water, the power, everything. Obviously a lot of trackway, which always is very upsetting on the budget, but a necessary thing and it's proved it this week. 
because the rain last week, the trackway was absolutely essential that we had it. So I, I won't cut corners, I won't compromise on the quality of our production because I wouldn't want to do it any other way. If we can't do it of a certain standard, then it wouldn't interest me. For us, the, you know, the landscape here is more important than the difficulty of actually producing it because I, I you know you just got to look around everywhere you look it's beauty so I think that what we try to do is to as Jill said not cut corners to put on a festival with really high production values and a really amazing aesthetic we're trying to create this standard that's really high and I think without, you know, they will just, cut, they will come. There's no question of it. I mean, everyone that walks onto this site is blown away by it. Um, and we, we haven't got many sponsors for this year. You know, sponsors often look at the numbers, don't they? You know, and until we get to 15,000, we probably, we may not. But I do think that because we're, you know, stepping out of the, the sort of the general style of festivals and we're doing something that's very niche then we will attract certain brands and those brands you know whether they've got an American kind of connection or whatever or you know they want a, a brand that wants to to be sort of linked to that whole authenticity sort of vibe I, I know that we will attract sponsors. We also want the right sponsors yeah. we're not going to compromise and we've said no to certain things because it wouldn't have been right it yeah. has to fit in a way that even if the uh, brand isn't immediately associated we can integrate it and make it right but it has to have some core values that we've got and I think that's what's important for us what's great about me understanding this festival site I know how to grow it it, when I got the licenses for it, it was for 30,000 I've got a license here for. So I know we've grown from last year. This year is we've moved glamping and uh, uh, living vehicles, moved over to the other side of, of the site. Um, and they all sold out. You know, it's great. We've got sellouts, sold out camper vans you know we've got circa 350 camper van pitches all sold out glamping all sold out so i we know that this is a festival that's going to if we continue in the same vein and everyone loves it this year that we're going to grow that side of it this audience is very much wanting to be comfortable and enjoy the the, the whole experience but you know it's not your two-man tent brigade <laughs> there's, you know there's obviously there are there are a mix of that but there's a lot of people that actually want, want to have a nice time and treat it like a holiday and it is appealing to all age groups because we do so much for children uh, you know our young folk area is a little festival within a festival and I think that that's why I think it's becoming appealing for families in terms of our growth it's nearly three times yeah double and a half is that's why we're so excited we keep going blimey no it has been a real pleasure to watch the numbers just you know creep up really nicely yeah we go oh quick let's look at them again i mean it's not the target we would have liked to achieve in order to pay for everything but it's not far. but it, but it's quite incredible the growth in in through the year that we've got yeah. and i actually think because Debs and I work on this all year, we're, we're not produ producing it and then going off and doing something else and then going, oh, right, quick, let's do Black Deer. This is a team that's working on this all year round. We, you know, we feed our socials and it's, it's just a continuous project for us. And I think that's probably what shows in what we're doing as well. I think because I've been, I've been a, a producer of festivals and also a supplier to festivals, never been a promoter before but learn all the things I wouldn't want to do as a promoter I think that's given us a, a head start and also with the agents I've known the agents for years as well so I was able to kind of pop in with our booker and and because a lot of them had been to the hot farm over those five years I was festival director there I think that is what gave you know gave us a bit of a head start and when producing the event I take into consideration all of the the problems you have as a producer of a festival and a supplier. So so applying all that, normally a promoter will sit there and won't have any understanding of 
of how to produce a festival, you know, because they've never done it before, but they've always paid someone to do it. I, I kind of understand those elements, so I think that's helped a lot. If we didn't get quality of sound on our festival, but we've got a great environment, that isn't a good festival. You know, so working with really experienced teams on, on sound and lighting is equally as important as any other part of the festival. So it, it's that that we have to get right and we believe we've got it right. So for this year we've decided to go cashless because the same reasons everyone else wants to go cashless, the same reasons that most European festivals operate cashless. Obviously we've got restrictions on data here, but it's still really, really useful for us to know you know what's working and what isn't what people are buying and what not and it's it's great for future potential sponsors particularly around the drink side of things obviously a big reason is that we want to make sure that all the money that's coming in is it's not going in anyone's pocket <laughs> <laughs> and it you know it's crazy really isn't it that huge amount of cash on in, on any site in a, with the festival and it just seems the right thing to do and talking to our PR company today that that's, he said 75% of his festivals now are all RFID. So I think it's, you know, it's technology, it's development, and we, we need to embrace it, really. And so we were going to do it in year one. And the only reason we didn't was because there was a, you know, I think our bar company were, you know, they didn't want to do it. And so it, it got to the point where we just said, right, let, let's just do a work on the EPOS for year one and then, you know, strive to develop the cashless side for year two and that's what we've done we've got a great ops director chris russell fish who's worked with us for a year and a half for his sins chris's initiative mainly was to to do rfid we all believed that it was the right step but operationally obviously it's sort of oh my god i know how the old wristband works <laughs> but it's not the same when you're when you've got the rfid system so after a few little teething problems, it seems to have smoothed itself out. And it's giving something back to our customer, you know. We value that they're going to come and, and spend money at our festival. We haven't ripped anyone off. We kept our beer prices low. We're at 5.50. There was some stuff on socials that was going, oh, I wonder if they, you know, all festivals put it up the next year. And we made a choice not to. Uh, I think it's the absolute right choice. Debs and I really, both of us, really massively care about our customers. So whilst we're pushed commercially, obviously, to try to balance the books, I think long term it will pay dividends that we've actually put our customer first. And I truly believe that that will eventually come good. I'm Ben from Playpass. I'm the project manager for the UK. We started working with Black Deer back in February. The first thing we started on working with them was their accreditation system, um, which they're the first festival this year to start using that. So we spent a good month working with them on all the passes and wristbands and all the crew they're having coming on site, getting all that organised for them. And then down to the nitty gritty with everything else, all the cashless, all the personal account um, stuff. Um, they've been really great to work with. They're very, very attentive um, and it shows from all the awards that they've won. So we're providing the cashless system to all of the traders and all the bars. Every single vendor on site is completely cashless. We've provided them all with the mobile devices, enabling them to take the money from customers. Um, understandably, people were a little bit nervous. Some of the traders, uh, actually a lot of the traders here have never used cashless before. Um, so we're all very, very nervous about using it for the first time. But actually what we found in the last two days when they've come round to speak to us and sort of get trained on how it works, they've all been pleasantly surprised at how simple the system is um, and how quick it is as well, which is obviously important when you've only got a very short window to take money from a customer. Speed is really important to them. So they all seem very happy. And of course, we've got a, a big dedicated team here. There's currently 10 of us on site covering all the customer support and also constantly checking in on the traders and the bars to making sure everything's working OK for them. Having no internet in a field like this has been quite tricky. Uh, most greenfield sites are really difficult to get internet connectivity into. One of the USPs of Playpass' system is the fact that it does all work offline. So if there isn't internet, you can still take payments. Of course, the, the gates and accreditation scanning tickets do require that. So attend to it have been worked really, really hard on here, um, getting every all the infrastructure in. They've got a lease line four miles away and they've got radios coming over to the top of the hill over there and then out to everywhere else they've had a real real tough time but everything's working the audience here is a little older than a lot of the festivals that we do so they've a bit a bit 
a bit more nervous about going cashless as older people can be with new technology. The festival have been really good at dealing with them softly and taking care and making sure that all the right messages are going out at the right time to the right people, making sure everybody fully understands exactly what's happening here so that when they do arrive on site, they know everything they need to know um, and everybody's happy. And so far, it seems that everything's going pretty well. So we, we've set up the personal account for the festival, which means that any time a customer buys a ticket, they can go online, use our online portal, um, and they can register their ticket and then load up money online before they come to the festival, which makes it a bit easy when they get here. So then as soon as they get their wristband, they've already got their money loaded. They don't have to queue up. They can just go straight to the bar. Um, and to help push that along, the festival's offered uh, incentives. So if you top up £100, they give you £10 for free. It's good, so it means people are getting a little bit out of using the personal account so they're not having to queue and they're getting a couple of free drinks out the festival which is really good and a new feature we've uh, set up this year is called family account so it's meant that couples actually quite a lot of couples um, and parents with small kids they can create one main account and then they can link their kids tickets to their account and top them up individually so they can let the kids go off into the festival spending their own money on their wristbands um, and then just top them up online automatically wherever they are. Um, it's proven to be pretty successful. So the crew accreditation combines all the RFID with the crew. So obviously crew don't get uh, tickets usually. They're not buying tickets through the ticket supplier ticket line. So in order for them to be able to get tickets to be scanned on site, everybody's put into our accreditation system and then a few days out from the festival, they're sent out a voucher with a barcode on it with all sorts of information about the festival, which gates they're coming into, where they need to go, who they need to talk to. Um, and then it means for security uh, at the box office or any of the entrances, crew can print out those tickets and get them scanned just like a customer um, and then get their RFID wristband and come into the festival. And it also means they're able to set up their personal accounts before the event as well. The way Black Deer decided to set it up is they created a pre-registration form. Everyone was sent an email with a link I was sent one for our crew, which I then distributed to all the rest of my crew, and then they had to fill out all their information themselves, car registration when they were on site, uh, birthday, and there was a health and safety document that they had to check that they read as well. So really good for the festival to be able to do all of that stuff digitally and track it without scraps of paper all over the place. I'm Chris Russell Fish, and I'm the Operations Director for Black Deer 2019. My job is to manage all of the technology, so the RFID and the Wi-Fi in connection with, of course, all of our merchants and our vendors and our bars and bringing all of that together and integrating that with our new festival app that we've just launched today um, and to make sure that that's as seamless as possible all the way through the festival for the next three days. The connectivity to our audience is really vital for us. Um, obviously last year we didn't have RFID, um, so making that step into this year into the, such, a, such an important part of obviously for our traders and the experiences for our customers was to make it absolutely certain that it was seamless um, and reliable but more importantly that we had to make sure our customers were educated because for most people still it's still quite a new technology for us it was brand new and we didn't know really how much work it was going to be so the selection of, in this case play pass for us was after i'd met steve jenner the md and ben hirons the lead technical chat for us the openness of play pass's ability to say look come to some of the festivals look at what we're doing for me was quite interesting because they invited me i went and i saw them but also more importantly for me it's how the customers and how the the vendors and the bars work so with the best will in the world with technology it's the application on the ground for me and that interaction with our customers Customers. So I went to a few other festivals and it looks all quite interesting. So everybody seemed really happy. Um, and then obviously I've spoken to those festivals since and obviously it's something they've, which has grown with them over the, over the last number of years. But the first impression was quite seamless. So that was, that was a little bit of nervousness that disappeared quite quickly, seeing other people having gone through that process. Some of the issues that I had were obviously shared and that had been solved. And um, so yes, it eased that path, I think. I think it's fair to say that when we launched the idea, the vendors and merchants and bars were quite nervous. When we started this process last year in September, we started making sure people were, were educated a little bit about what it was and how we were going to progress it. And then of course, like most vendors and merchants, it all becomes important in January because the festival is just around the corner. So we, we've worked quite hard on a very personal level through our concession company, Lost Planet. So we, we've worked quite close with them to make sure that they understood that, yes, those problems do happen, and yes, it is technology based, but there has to be a platform of how you protect yourself uh, for not only from their point of view, but what safeguards do you have in place to make sure that when things do go wrong, 
you have a fallback position. And that was one of the biggest questions that we, we came across was what happens if and we have quite a lot of technology in place um, to actually make sure that's the case. So that's quite a big educational process to go through to calm the nerves. How they helped us do that was with engaging directly with the customer as well. So the customer service line, support line is fantastic, So, um, but also from my point of view the information coming down was equally so. That's how we got over that process, but that's been six months. That isn't, that isn't a couple of emails and everybody feels very happy. It's been a constant process and all of, the, all of the bars and merchants have asked all the questions that you or I would. So how does it affect me? What if it goes wrong? And all the things that, that, that you would expect them to. And it, for us it was very, very important based on our ethos for the festival that we supported them all of the way and they knew that it can go wrong but if it does we can do this. So that's how we've got them on board and as you can tell by today we've got over that first few hours of nervousness and in fairness to what Player Pass told me they said there'll be low nerves and people will be up to the first couple of hours and they'll go oh yeah of course why did we talk for six months and in actual fact that's exactly what's happened today given what some people think they may have heard from other areas and other times and other countries is that what happens to my money one of the important things was to make sure that people felt safe and secure they felt that we could be trusted because it's quite a it's quite a big thing for people to say look I'll come to your festival I'll work for three days I'll sell all of my stock all my staff and the money is disappearing somewhere and obviously you'll be there on Monday morning. For us it was very important that everybody knew that we'd put safeguards in place so to make sure that was always set to one side. So all of everything that was go through the wristbands that you just mentioned, any top ups, all of that is all carefully placed and safeguarded because I know that most of our traders and merchants on Monday morning will take down their stalls and they'll be heading off to the next festival. So that cash flow for them is really, really important. Last year we launched an app for the festival. We started to work with a company called Buzznog um, who have worked with us now for 18 months in the development of the app. So the last year it was very much this is the fundamental part of the festival, all the, all the social media posts and all the t stage times, all things you'd expect. And then when we started to progress in October last year, the RFID for me was a very important part of our next, our development and our next stage, is that I wanted to try and bring a much easier experience. In the focus groups that I'd run, the people I'd spoken to, we'd already, we'd already discussed about cashless beans, different things to different people, but I was wondering whether you could actually apply RFID through our app. So there are no top-up booths, there was, you didn't have to find a signal, well you, obviously for the, for the app, but, but actually going to the app, opening um, an RFID uh, play pass page and saying £10 and it's done, and then continue. And as of this morning, you can download our app, hit the £10 button and it will put it onto your wristband, which is a huge step forward. We had a great attendance last year and the vast majority of people who downloaded the app kept it all year, which was quite interesting because you're always wondering, oh I wonder if they'll get bored, but, the, but we kept feeding it and, and talking about it. And the idea idea is that we engage all the way through the year and expand your experiences of us and what we would like to bring to the festival um, and all of our social media content and so forth as well as all the other bits and pieces that we think are really important so when you join Black Deer through the app you don't only join us for the three days but it, it steps all the way through. Year two was a massively important thing for us it's the old you know second album <laughs> syndrome um, we were so fortunate to have won four awards for year one, which was, you know, overwhelming in a way in the industry, especially being in the industry for such a long time, going to so many awards. And it's like, oh, blimey, that's us. Um, so, so that was really, really heartwarming. So we need to get year two done, need to get that kind of absolutely spot on. And then we look at developing potential uh, you know, we could do a black deer in Europe. There's, there's lots of discussions around the board table, you know, with our investors about where we take the brand of black deer. But it will always be carefully curated by Debs and I because it's not going to be uh, watered down all the while we're involved with it. You know, it, it's too important to us, isn't it? Yeah. We'd rather walk away from it than to have it, have it smashed a bit. So <laughs> interwoven into our lives. Yeah. It's like unlike anything I've ever done I mean yeah, really black I've, dear I've boys hard I've never <laughs> had such a passion for something and we just live and breathe it we love it we love it <laughs>